Welcome to the Radio Horror Review of the Channing Tatum movie, Blink Twice. Don't Blink Twice? Blink Twice. Blink Twice. Um, directed and written by Zoe Kravitz, who was doing double duty this weekend as they re-released The Batman in theaters as her version of Catwoman is back on the big screen. And now she's the director's chair and the writer's chair and the producer's chair, but not starring in this movie. Uh, but stars a whole bunch of people that I haven't seen in a movie in a really long time, which was pretty interesting. Uh, we're not going to do spoilers because I fear that that's going to ruin this movie for you when you finally get to it. Because, damn, does it hit you like a freight train? But, um, you know, great to see Gina Davis and Kyle McLaughlin and Haley Joe Osment and um, Simon Rex. Yep. And later. Christian Slater. Christian Slater has been in a bunch of direct to DVD or Hulu uh, films here and there and everywhere, which is uh, pretty interesting. Of course, he's going to be back on uh, TV soon as uh, the father of Dexter coming up. So that'll mm-hmm. be interesting. But I digress. Um, this was a turn of a movie for me with Chatting Tatum's character. Um, I was I was shocked. Didn't you get a corkscrew from the premiere of this movie? <laughs> did this will open up nicely will open up nicely is it is it a bar corkscrew is it also a pocket knife yeah got this got this wait i've got a knife yeah i mean it's the full thing obviously i can't open it up so um if something happens to me uh, okay, so you got a um, what is it called? Uh, like a a lime slicer or peeler? Oh, I have no course. idea. I think that's what the little knife is—is is for limes. Probably. Yeah, I never <laughs> use it. So, but uh, yeah, that's that's uh, that's pretty nice and indicative of the some of the plot in the movie. <laughs> yes. You, you, as you put it, a dark comedy mystery psychological thriller yeah and uh i actually really like this film i think zoe kravitz uh this i think she definitely is as her uh directorial debut um for a feature film i think she um has many i think this really opened up uh things that she can do in the future uh this is a role unlike you've ever seen Channing Tatum play. And that's really difficult considering his star power. Like, uh, I'm wondering if this will be a one and done kind of role for him. Uh, I will advise people two things. One, don't watch the trailers or anything when you go and see it. Uh, but two, two, uh, there, I know one of my friends who went and saw it, I've seen it at press screenings. One of my friends who saw it recently said there was a trigger warning um, or some sort of uh, warning for people. I would advise that. Um, I'm not going to say what it is, but it there are scenes that are jarring. Um, I don't want to say why, but uh, I think Naomi Aki, who plays Frida, the lead character, who you know um, immediately is obsessed, not obsessed, but infatuated, with Channing Tatum's character, Slater King. Uh, You see him while he's doing an interview, how he's on an apology tour for actions he did. We as the audience don't know exactly what they are. uh, And we don't need to. We just know that he's like, you know, apologizing. Our lead actress, um, our, you know, star of the film, she is just enamored with him. You can tell just immediately the way she looks at the screen on her phone whatever he does, I'm not saying whatever he does, it doesn't matter, but she's like very like um, wide eyed and just, it's like very puppy, puppy love kind of crush look in her face. So when she gets the opportunity to work at uh, his tech gala, they have a meet cute. uh, They're talking all night. Her friend played by Ilya uh, Shawkat. Um, Jess, who you know from uh, Arrested Development, uh, she's also talking to a number of his friends. They have a little, probably about 10 of them, including um, Frida and Jess. And it's a great night. Everyone's having a good time. You can tell Frida doesn't want it to end, but everyone's leaving because 
Uh, Slater, because he's a billionaire, has this beautiful island that he goes to. He raises um, his own fruit and vegetables. They have chickens. Um, it's very healing and zen-like. And uh, before no he technology. leaves, he asks, huh? No technology. No technology, nothing. No screen time, nothing. It's just being one with nature. Yep. And uh, he asks the girls if they want to join. And they say yes. And I know there are a number of people like, you know, that's an idiotic thing. But honestly, the way they all acted together, it it really did remind me of my friends when we would go uh, to this cabin um, every um, other weekend and stuff in the summer. And it didn't seem to bother me that much. I know I may be naive and stuff, but uh, it seemed great. Everybody wears the same clothes when they get to the island. Everyone's in white dresses, white bathing suits, same sunglasses. It's just a thing that it's like, you know, that's what rich people do. They have beautiful music. They have amazing music. They have um, fantastic meals. They laugh. They're drinking. Again, this all reminds me of stuff I used to do with my friends. So I see nothing wrong with it until something is wrong. Uh, again, be prepared for the trigger. Uh, I think that Naomi Aki, she had previously uh, portrayed Whitney Houston in um, a biopic. Oh, it was fantastic. Okay. Uh, I That's totally right. believed her smittenness with Channing Tatum, like from the get go. Uh, as Chris said, Kyle McLaughlin, Gina Davis, they were great. It was fun seeing, uh, you know, Haley Joel Osment, Simon Rex, and like these goofy kind of characters. And Christian Slater cracked me up. One person that is a newbie to me, but not, um, we all know his parents. Uh, his name is Levon Hawk, who is the son of Uma and Uma Thurman and. Ethan Hawke. Uh, he plays a character named Lucas. Uh, this is a film that, oh, I, like I said, wow. I enjoyed. I know many people probably compare it to Don't Worry Darling and maybe Infinity Pool. I feel like there's a little bit more Promising Young Woman mixed in with that. Uh, go in, you know, again, if you've got some trigger warnings and stuff like that, I don't want to give it away, but I yeah. personally liked the ending. I thought that the cast was spectacular. I think, um, you know, Jane Tatum's been in the spotlight for close to 20 years. And I like the way that uh, Zoe Kravitz just filmed him in a way that I'm like, you know, you're a good looking guy, but man, she really got you to look even more bedazzling than I have seen you in like forever. And believe me, I like the way I like the first part of Magic Mike three. Hello. But this guy, ooh, hey, three. um, what a charmer. Um, yeah, it's got funny lines, it's got amazing music. Uh, and I actually say go see it, just go see it without uh watching the trailer. How about this? In two years, Zoe Kravitz directs Channing Tatum in Gambit. <laughs> I don't know if he's ever going to do Gambit besides Deadpool and Wolverine. I think that's fine. He got to do it at least once, which he's been trying to do for 10 years. I mean, you know, similar to Idris Elba, Elba with uh, Bond, I think maybe he's a little too old to do um, Gambit. Not that I'm saying Channing Tatum is old, but it's like Kids, when you start doing a superhero movie, you're usually blocked off for that, like for 20 years. That means wow. he'd be doing Gambit with 60. I mean, not everybody's going to be like um Hugh Jackman Wolverine. Yeah, Hugh Jackman. That's that's a once in a lifetime kind of thing. And but he got to play Gambit. So that's it. I mean, I I honestly like seeing Chan Tatum and uh like almost everything that he's been in. I honestly don't know of that. I mean, there have been some. What did you think of the but, um, music? The, what did you think of the music in this movie? I thought it was great. I've said it. That's one of the highlights of the film. I thought it was. Oh, one I mean, of, I'm um, sorry. I meant the editing. I, I meant to say the editing. The editing. Just the way it. Oh, um, I thought the editing was very good because it allows the audience to know what is happening without being visually horrific. Uh, you honestly, you don't need to go too far to know 
what it what um is happening in this film and i think that's uh, a good way to do the editing and the direction the um the resurrection of the polaroid camera has been happening for the last year and a half or two years if you go to mm -hmm. um if you were at any black friday sale the last couple of black fridays Best Buy has had displays upon displays, like towers of these like new Polaroid cameras that you can buy for less than a hundred bucks, which I think is pretty fantastic. They go for normally like $199.99 these days, but usually, like I said, waiting for Black Friday sales is probably the best. Uh, you might not get the Polaroid camera just like that one, but they're uh, they they they're becoming looking pretty close, and I guarantee this will resurrect the Polaroid camera hopefully because that is a uh, forgotten piece of technology we need to bring back, kind of like. Uh, the DVD, you know, I'm saying, uh, or the Blu-ray, sorry, the 4K. Uh, <laughs> um, I had no idea what this movie was other than seeing the trailer one time, and I, I, I might not have been paying attention when the trailer was playing. I might have been talking to my girlfriend. I don't know. I just remember seeing bits and clips of it. Um, I think the trailer sucks for one big reason, is they reveal a big plot point in this movie, which I don't feel like they should have revealed in the trailer, but I understand they have to grab in that audience so I'm not stupid. I'm playing this game myself right now, coming up soon, uh, where someone's like, you have to put that in your trailer, Chris. And I'm just like, you, no, I don't want to do that. No. So um, I get it, but that's the devil's advocate of when you become the director and producer of your own film. Um, I think overall, this movie left me with like this just yeah, the entire time. And I'm sitting next to my girlfriend, just like, oh my God, what is she thinking about? <laughs> Um, the films that Katie mentioned are absolutely 100% accurate in, in terms of like, you know, just how you can feel connected to this movie. There was a movie that came out last year, I believe, directed by Olivia Wilde starring Chris Pine. Do you remember that film? Don't worry, darling. Yes. That's that. a movie that I mentioned. Yes. Okay. That movie, um, I, I have, I, I started watching it. I had got, uh, and the, and then my, and then the, um, the internet died because I had rented it and I never picked up again because we didn't get the internet back until the next day. So I had completely forgotten I had rented it for the 48 hours on Amazon. Um, I have to go back and finish watching that movie, but that movie definitely had that kind of like thoughts in my head when I was watching it. Um, this type of dark psychological thriller with some dark humor thro thrown into it yeah. um, can be um, right up there with like warm bodies in a way. Um, and it works really well with this film. Or is it warm bodies I'm, I'm thinking of? The movie where they're all drugged out and there's like everyone gets get keeps getting killed and then you find out in the end what's really going on. No, that's Infinity Pool. No, no. What's the movie with the guy from SNL that was in... Um, uh, not warm bodies. Um, it's like eight, six friends at a drug-induced weekend. And one keeps getting killed after the other. In the end of the movie, you find out the big... Se we reviewed it, the big secret about how they're all killed. Oh, man, what is that guy? What is that actor's name from SNL? Oh, wait, are you talking about Bodies, Bodies, Bodies? Bodies, Bodies, Bodies. Oh, Bodies, Bodies, Bodies. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Um, dark horror movie, and then with the, with this underlining dark humor, and then the end, you find out what's going on. Not the same film, so people not being spoiled by anything. But I just got that kind of like that tone and feel from it, or whatever, being hit with the revelation at the revelation. So um, I do I, I want to point out that Adria Arjano, who plays Sarah, and Liz Carabel, who plays Camilla, honestly, uh, huge standouts. Again. Like I said, I think this casting was absolute perfect perfection. It's like you've got familiar faces um, that, you know, we've grown up with kind of um, that people know, like uh, Haley Joel Osment, Christian Slater. But then you have these uh, actresses who are like freaking kill it. And uh, yeah, again, um, I thought uh, great casting and I'd love to hear what you guys think of it. Uh, again, trigger warning, make sure you understand there is a trigger warning and don't see the trailer. And you know what? If you don't want something in your trailer, Chris, don't go along with it. Neon um, made long legs have the, the best trailer of the year. No one knows what the hell that movie was talking about or what that movie was going to be. And guess what? That's why it's the number one horror film of the year because everybody went in. It's like the way it was cut, it was edited, 
you didn't know what was going to happen in that film, but damn it, you wanted to see it. And that's what more people should be doing. Not giving away huge sections of the film so that it's like when you see it, it's like, oh yeah, I saw that in the trailer. So if someone's telling telling you to put like a big reveal in your trailer, say no and don't do it. It's not a big reveal because my film is a documentary, but they're like, you got to put a piece of what you just got in your documentary. And I think it's really going to grab people's attention because of how they feel about who this artist was. And I'm like, no, I really want to save that for when they watch the movie, looking at what it is I've uncovered or whatever. So that when they see it, they're like, oh, my God, look at that. He's alive. You know, mm-hmm. he's not alive. He's really dead. But I- I'll explain later on. But anyway, I digress. Go see this movie in theaters, people, please. Um, grab yourself a uh, Batman uh, cup and popcorn bucket when you go see Zoe Kravitz film. So you have this weird mashup of a Batman <laughs> star in a, making a non-Batman movie. <laughs> in fact, book yourself a double feature. Go see the Batman while it's playing in theaters this weekend. I'm back to back with this film. <laughs> uh, I digress. Go see it in theaters, people. I'm tired of seeing things go to streaming within like two minutes later. Jesus Christ. I think the only person that's actually, the only company that's actually keeping um, their word to keeping things in theaters is Disney. Hence why Inside Out 2 was in theaters for like 100 days. But uh, I digress. <laughs> Listen, everyone, uh, follow Disney's lead. They're the ones doing it. Um, I recommend this film. Uh, make sure you check out the rest of the reviews here. I just posted one of Blood and uh, Donuts, a favorite 1990s vampire movie of mine. I will have another vampire movie coming up soon, Daughter of Darkness, starring Mia Saro, um, at, which I had never heard of before. You can find that here on the Radio Hard YouTube channel coming up very soon, and also our review of Alien Romulus soon as well. Thank you, everyone. Go check out Katie over on her Facebook page as well, The Blonded Front. Instagram, uh, YouTube, and TikTok that as well.